very good morning and welcome into Morning Drive on a Wednesday. Anna Whiteley with you alongside Damon Hack, Paige McKenzie and Robert Damron. So far, 11 PGA Tour events have been cancelled or postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But during this time, the PGA Tour continues to focus on how to make up for lost playing opportunities once play resumes. So in response, next month's Charles Schwab Challenge and the Memorial Tournament will both have field sizes expanded from 120 players to 144 players. It's also reported that the circuit plans to play as many opposite field at tournaments as possible and as a result the new pace of play policy will also be pushed back to begin next season. So Robert Dameron, I'm going to come to you first on this because if you were a player teeing it up in these tournaments, does this new expanded field size of, a tw of 24 players, does that change things for you in terms of pace of play and group sizes or scoring trends? How does this change things? It is kind of funny that they put the pace of play policy aside because a bigger field, the pace of play is going to be more important. But you also re realize these fields, when we do start back up, they're going to be strong. Rory McIlroy and Justin Thomas, they're not going to sit home for two more weeks. They're all ch chomping at the bit, ready to get out there. So what happens is the rookies end up getting the short end. That's why they're adding the field sizes and making them bigger. Here's what you're going to have to realize, I think, first and foremost. Play's not going to finish on time Thursday. It's not going to finish on time Friday. You're going to have groups left out that are going to have to finish Saturday morning. And that's just the way it's going to be. No big deal. You make the cut and you try to make up for that time on the weekend, uh, probably with threesomes. Paige, these are the kind of fields that we see incredibly strong players, you know, the world-class players teared up at these events. And we spend so long talking about the likes of Rory McIlroy, Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, uh, Tiger even. But what are the chances, and this is the great thing about golf, is that we always root for the underdog. But what do you think are the chances of these extra 24 players coming in and winning one of these events? Well, l listen, it's extra 24 getting to a, a basically full field size, 144 is not 175. These are still very normal field sizes. They were actually at 120 previously uh, reduced field sizes. So I think there's a good chance we're going to see some players that maybe you haven't heard of before uh, come up to the top, but most likely you're going to actually have heard of most of the players uh, in that extra 24. Uh, and even if you look at last season, you look at the Corey Connors that Monday qualified, you look at Cameron Champ's fall season, uh, some of these players became household names uh, because they were given playing opportunities early. Well, we see it all the time. I mean, I was at the RSM Classic. You had Tyler Duncan, who hadn't won a professional event, ranked 378 in the world, and he beats Webb Simpson, a major champion, a player's champion in a playoff. You got Keith Mitchell, ranked 162nd. At Honda, who does he beat? Brooks Kepka and Ricky Fowler. Adam Long, 417th in the world, beats Phil Mickelson and Adam Hadwin. And then historically, I mean, you've got Jack Fleck beating Ben Hogan in a U.S. Open. You've got a qualifier in Michael Campbell beating Tiger Woods at Pinehurst. You have Steve Jones, a qualifier, beating Tom Lehman and Davis Love the Third at Oakland Hills. Uh, outsiders having success, it's a part of the DNA of our game. Would you agree, Robert? It, absolutely. I actually, get, to my mind, I was thinking Mike Nicolette beat Greg Norman. I think it was 1984 at the Arnold Bomber Invitational. That was the biggest upset of all time. But in today's game, more than 1984, the, the bottom of the list on the FedEx Cup points list are way stronger than they ever were before and way more ready to win, way more capable of winning. But we do have a, a, a bunch of thoroughbreds near the top. Yeah, I mean, my mind just goes to Brendan Todd, who not so long ago was going for the three-peat on the PGA Tour, and nobody would have seen that coming whatsoever. And, and just looking broadly across all the tours, whenever play comes back into action, I'm sure all tours will be looking at ways to, to help players with things like playing opportunities and purses that have lost prize money uh, that obviously hasn't been able to have been one page. Can you see any other variations to help these kind of problems across the tours? You know, I liked what the PGA Tour was saying about doing more opposite field events, making sure that you're honoring all of the sponsors and the events that they had on the schedule in different creative ways. That's something I do not see the Champions Tour or LPGA Tour doing uh, strictly based on their membership size. They don't typically hold, have enough members to be able to field opposite field events. I do, however, see the potential of maybe combining two events and making it a super purse, uh, a two for one deal on, on some of these events. 
uh, you never know. It would be a creative way to kind of address uh, the lack of opportunity for these players due to this virus. Yeah, well, well, it's great to see the PGA Tour putting their heads together and creating more opportunities for these players because so far it is 11 events that have been postponed or cancelled and we wait to see how this all unfolds. But stay with us here on Morning Drive every day. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to the Golf Channel YouTube page and don't miss anything this evening by following Golf Central.